It's the Popori Show. A mixture, a medley, a gallimorphy of assorted things, a salmagundi or multifarious mixture. An edifying conglomeration of odds and ends, 15 minutes of something to encourage the world weary. Paganini, the famous violinist, had a very embarrassing situation occur in one concert. With his Stradivarius tucked beneath his chin, only one of the strings remained. Paganini and one string, a spirit that refused to quit. This master performer improvised and completed the composition. You see, it's not the strings you've lost that count, it's the ones you've got left and what you do with them. In a ritzy uptown church, an old tramp wandered in with worn-out boots, grubby overalls, ragged flannel shirt, and he just sat down there as the worshippers came in. Somebody said to him, you really ought to pray about how God would have you dress when you come to church. And the tramp replied, well, God said he didn't know how to dress for this particular church because he's never been here himself. Holiness, holiness, it's not your food or drink, it's not the way you dress. Holiness, holiness, it's to hear the Lord to answer yes. Last year we were taking part in an open-air inter-church Remembrance Day ceremony on the church green in bright sunlight and the United Reform Church minister read Marjorie Dobson's poem entitled By a Monument of Marble. Several people asked her for a copy at the end of the service, and here it is. Imagine it's November the 11th, just before the two-minute silence. By a monument of marble, or by simple wooden cross, here we gather to remember sacrifice and tragic loss. Blood-red poppy petals flutter, shadows of a war long past, all the conflict, all the carnage, sanitised by time at last. Solemn silence now surrounds us as we stand in memory. Why should evil lead to conflict? This eternal mystery troubles hearts and stirs the conscience, urges us to think again, face the curse of confrontation, yet reduce this searing pain. For the sound of war still thunders through our planet on this day. Every hour new victims suffer even as we meet to pray. God, beyond our understanding, peace seems far beyond our reach. Move us on to new solutions through that active love you teach. Now here's a poem, Great Redeemer, by Lorraine Payne. Great Redeemer of situations, lover of my soul, healer of my broken spirit, come Lord and make me whole. I'll dance with you as our spirits entwine, carry me up to the heights, feed me on the choicest wine, let me taste your delights. The brightness of your countenance, the sweetness in your voice, the very fragrance that is you makes my soul rejoice. The warmth of your embracing arms, shoulders broad and strong, the firmness of your legs and feet that carry me along. The hands that hold seven stars are engraved with my name. 
Holy Lord, so pure and true, always, forever the same. I wonder if you remember the hard-hitting book by Ronald J. Sider, Rich Christians in an Age of Hunger. It was recognised by Christianity Today as being among the hundred most influential religious books of the 20th century. Its subtitle was, Why Are Christians Living Just Like the Rest of the World? All the evangelism in the world from a church that is not herself holy and redeemed and righteous will not be worth a hill of beans in world-changing power. Could it be that our evangelistic efforts are often crippled by our behaviour? The first century Christians led transformed lives. There was stunning economic sharing in the early church. It says in Acts, all the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. All the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. Much grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them. In this loving community, people's needs were met. The first church in the world, living like Jesus. As they followed the man for others, this became their lifestyle, and it lasted. In the middle of the second century, Justin Martyr said of Christians, those who once delighted in fornication now embrace chastity alone. We who once took most pleasure in accumulating wealth and property now share with everyone in need. In 125 AD, the Christian apologist Aristides described Christians in this way. They walk in all humility and kindness, and falsehood is not found among them, and they love one another. If there is among them a man that is poor and needy, and they have not an abundance of necessaries, they fast two or three days, that they may supply the needy with their necessary food. You see, Jesus wasn't just their saviour, he was their Lord. It's interesting to record that the New Testament uses saviour for Jesus 16 times, but the New Testament refers to Jesus as Lord 420 times. Is Jesus your Lord? Accepting Christ as Lord means submitting every corner of one's life to him. You may remember the words of John Wesley, earn all you can, Save all you can, give all you can. Someone's twisted it to make it read differently today. Get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can. Is this the gospel of individual self-fulfilment which now reigns? Churchless born-againism is a new type of apostasy never before seen in history. The Popori Show A miscellaneous collection, a combination of incongruous things, a melange, a ragbag, omnium gatherum, an amalgam of things... Till next time, it's Derek Lindley wishing you every blessing and thanks for listening.